Okay, welcome back. These are the legs. What I'm doing now is just putting a little radius on the three exposed corners of them before we start screwing the frames in place. It's not strictly necessary. I think it just makes it look a little bit more attractive and also reduces the risk of chipping the corners. So down the three exposed corners, don't forget to leave the internal one square to fit the frames up against, and then we can actually start screwing it all together. This isn't the easiest job, it's all getting a little bit uh, heavy. I decided the easiest way was to put each section onto the bench and then I've just clamped the legs on the side here and I'm going to drill and screw through. I'm going to put four screws down the length of each. I think that should give plenty of support and get it all nice and rigid. Put well, these at a slight angle because of the internal frame. We've got plenty of meat to go out in the legs so should be no problem. Now it's the same procedure for the front panel, except on this one it's even more awkward to get the drill bit and screwdriver bit in because of these uh, uprights here. So I just put an extension on the drill, it just gives me a little bit extra leeway. Now this whole assembly process is turning out to be a bit more challenging than anticipated. These sections are really quite heavy. In the absence of a glamorous assistant, or even an unglamorous assistant, I figured the best way was to lay out the heaviest back panel on the floor, screw on the two sides, drop the front on, screw up from underneath, and then try and stand the whole thing up on its legs as a one. We'll see if that works out in a minute. Right, let's see if we can stand it up, or even if it's vaguely square. I'll put a couple of big weights in against the legs at the back there, stop the whole thing sliding backwards, I lift it up and now we'll give it a go. I don't really want to lift by the apex so that might just snap the whole thing off so bend your knees and up we go. Wasn't too bad. All right, so look what it's like for squareness. It's actually not too bad a fraction out but we can square that up when I put the base in I'm going to put a, a solid ply base in and that will pull it all square I think the next job is to uh, get the doors made because that's quite a big job we'll get that one out of the way I'm just making up the frames for the doors for this I'm using the 45 by 32 material I'm just putting a single screw in each joint but I have put a little dab of waterproof glue on the end of each just to get a little bit more strength but it'll gain its strength when we put the cladding on. Now when I start out on this project I originally planned to use more of the cladding, the chiplap cladding to cover these doors but looking at the front now I think it's going to look a little bit messy. We've got short bits here and two more lots of short bits for the doors and another short bit there. I think it's just going to look a little bit odd. So I've changed my mind I'm going to try some tongue and groove run vertically. We'll see what it looks like when it's finished. If you don't like it, you can go back to the original plan. But I'm going to try this straightforward tongue and groove material. So this is the material I'm going to use, which is standard tongue and groove, which slots together much in the same way as the shiplap. You can see I've actually got to use five pieces to get the width I want. And although I want some overhang, I don't want this amount of overhang, so I'm going to trim a bit off both edges, rather than trim it all off one edge and leave an odd tiny little piece on this side. Centralise it and trim the same amount off both edges to leave the amount of overhang you want. You could use a circular saw to cut off this waste, but I think on these narrow pieces where there's not a lot of support, I think it's safer to use a jigsaw. Once the pieces are all the correct length, you can start nailing them onto the framework. Use the nail gun again, and I'm just putting a couple of nails in the two narrow pieces, and then one nail in each of the wider pieces, again to allow for some movement during the warmer months. You notice that I've used a clamp just to pull the joints up tight while I nail everything on. Okay, so that's the two doors nailed up now. To finish them off, I'm just going to run around the outer edges, all these cut edges, with a little router with a 45 degree chamfer bit on it, and just chamfer off all the edges, put a little V on it, like the actual V on the tongue and groove itself. I think it'll just neaten it up considerably. 
There you go. One routed, one not. Hopefully you can see what a difference that's made. Just a little touch with the router makes it look so much more professional. Okay, so that's the two doors done. Don't tell anybody, but I think I've actually made them a little bit over wide. But it doesn't matter. I can trim a strip off the overlap here where the two doors meet and then run it round with the router again. No one will ever know. But I'll leave that till I fit the hinges and I can sort it out properly. Next job, I think, is to get the floor in and then the roof and the job's nearly finished. To support the floor, I've made up this frame, which I know is dead square. So it should pull the main structure square with a bit of look. And this should just drop in to be a reasonably tight fit. Yeah, there we go, that drops in. And I want to leave that 12 millimeters down from the main frame, leave a little rebate and I can sit the ply base on top of that. This frame just screws into place. I've got a couple of clamps just to hold it in position while I put the screws in. A little off cut of what I'm going to use for the baseboard to make sure I drop it down. A little rebate here so the base then ends up flush with the rest of the frame. So just screw these in. And I'll actually just hold it with three either side for now. When I put this finally on site, and assemble it for the last time. I'll probably put a few more screws in to hold this frame really secure. To cut up these big sheets of ply, I always use a circular saw. It's much more accurate than trying to do it with a jigsaw. You don't have to clean up the edge afterwards. In this case, I'm using a plunge saw, and I'm going to use it on a guide track like this. All I have to do is lay this on the line that already marked. No need to clamp it down on thin stuff like this. Just drop it in place. The rubber underneath will hold it and then put your saw on and make the cut. The tracks are available in different lengths. I've got a shorter one here for these narrow cuts. It's less cumbersome. Just drop it on the line again. And away we go. With a bit of luck, this should now just drop into place. And hopefully, I have made a better job of measuring it than I did with the doors. Look at that, look at that. Perfect and flush with the frame all round. I'm just going to cut a couple more pieces of the ply for shelves higher up. Right, the roof's next. And that's dead easy. We're going to use plywood again. And we need support though. So I've put in a ridge piece, which is a piece of the 45 by 45 material, just screwed through from either end. Just got to fix this one in place. When you drill through, I'm just using a single screw, when you drill through just position the hole carefully so you miss the screw that's holding the two halves of this frame together. So just position that in line and away we go. Just pull it up carefully, there we go, that's nice and firm. And now I can cut a couple of pieces of plywood to go on the roof. Now I've probably gone a little bit overboard with this top. I've actually used 25 millimeter ply. When I drew the design out initially, I could see that if I just put the ridge piece in here, I wouldn't need any additional framing to support the roof, provided I used thick enough ply. Looking at it though now, 18 millimeter, three quarter inch stuff would probably have done. The upside of using inch stuff is it's very, very strong. This is never gonna sag. The downside is it's very heavy. And when you're working on your own like I do, you've got to develop strategies for supporting timber safely while you're working on it. So I've just put a sash clamp across, as you can see here, with a quick grip clamp, and that'll stop it sliding down while I position it and hold it with these clamps at the top. So, first step is to screw this on. I'm gonna screw it, because again, I need to be able to dismantle this whole thing 
and take it on site later. So I'm using two and a half inch screws. So drill and count sink these in the same way as all the others. I would think six or eight all the way around should be enough to hold it in place. There are six screws is actually plenty. That's really rigid. Now this is exterior ply I've used, so theoretically you could just leave the surface like that. But I think it needs some extra protection of some sort, so you can put on whatever you fancy. You can use ordinary roofing felt, you can use wooden shingles, but I'm actually going to use felt shingles. These are much longer lasting than ordinary standard roofing felt. But there's no point putting them on at this stage, because all this has got to be dismantled to get it on site. So now I've just got to fit the other half and the roof's finished. If you set your saw at 45 degrees when you cut these two boards out, you should end up with a nice mitered top there. I think now I'll just cover the edges with a little bit of trim and that job's finished. Okay, so these are the trim strips. I've actually cut these down from some of the offcuts of the material I had for the doors, that tongue and groove material. I was going to use some thicker stuff originally, but I think this is going to be plenty good enough. You need a 45 degree angle on one end, obviously to go up here, then at this bottom end I put two 45s and then for now I've just pinned these on using a couple of nails just so you can see what it actually looks like. All this is going to have to come off again when we dismantle it to move it on site. So just for now you can see I think that leaves a much neater finish to the edge of the board. It will also hide the edge of the felt. Repeat the procedure with the other two trim strips on the back and your roof is then finished. So that's it for part three. Come back for part four. I'm going to fit these doors add a few other little finishing touches and then finally get it on site and see what it looks like.